Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Ursa Ryan and look, we're playing as the English. It's finally time for England and the A to Z challenge. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm really looking forward to this because this game should be ridiculous and especially because of the start. Look at this absolute mess of a start. I don't know what is going on here but this should prove to be a very interesting game. Now as usual the channel supporters have made a fantastic game for me to get stuck into today and it is as follows. We are playing a huge TSL Earth map as provided to us by the beautiful devs at Civ6 and I thought it would be really funny to play this default base TSL Earth game kind of for a couple of reasons. First of all console players this is a map that you all have so as long as you've got the base game you own this map. It looks really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what the UK looks like at all. Secondly, I thought it would be interesting to show this map off compared to a lot of the modded maps we've been doing recently. It's really funny when you play the really fantastically good mod maps and then you come back to the base game maps and go, what is this? So this should be a lot of fun. The goal of the game is simple. We have to, of course, recreate the British Empire. That used to span about two-fifths of the world. It's going to be quite difficult to do. It basically involves me taking over places like India, Australia, Canada, uh, ev everywhere pretty much. We're going to make a lot of enemies in this game. But we also have to do another couple of things. Once we have our empire, we need to declare peace with the world and basically try and be friendly with them. We need to go for a cultural victory. I need to use rock bands to name them very institutionally awesome British bands that have occurred through the years, such as the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, a lot of cool things that Britain has spat out, Muse, haha, <laughs> Biffy Clyro, the list goes on. I mean, I guess they are Scottish and whether or not we're playing English or Britain in this game, I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to say Britain because, well, Britain. I also need to go through the world and see if I can claim every source of tea. Because of course, tea. I'll trade for it if I have to, but I'd rather just take it over. Mmm, conquest. So this game is going to be a little bit of a mess. We have a few modes on. Barb clans, heroes and legends, monopolies and corporations, secret societies on as well. I have no real agenda in this game. We're putting monopolies and corporations on because the idea of getting a tea corporation was just too much British for me. I could not help it. It also opens up the availability of getting a culture victory later into the game because of the crazy way the AI works culture. It's only a 20 player game as well, so we should be able to just get a normal one. I quite like it when I'm playing these massive tier sell earth maps the slightly broken way the culture victories have worked on corporations and monopolies means that it sort of puts a tail end to the game on sort of turn 200 or so that means i haven't got to be playing these massive games until a science victory that you all know i would win it's it's a really nice alternative way of winning we also today have a few mods on that i think should make this game a little bit interesting to start with because we've got a 20 player game i put religion expanded on it's a really fun mod it just makes them more pantheons more religion choices in case we do want to go down that way. I don't know if we'll go religion in this game. We'll see. I have a mod called Fix AI Corporations. Now this should fix the luxury issues that AI has with monopolies and corporations mode. Specifically, it moves, and this is a bit weird, it moves corporations to currency. So you'll see that corporations now exist on currency. You still can't make them until you get down to economics. That's hard coded into the game. But what it does is it changes the way I, uh, the AI thinks about luxuries and it means they actually should improve them into the game. So I'm really hoping that mod helps quite a lot. I have a mod called Aircraft Carriers Perfected. I don't know if we'll get to aircraft carriers, but if we do, there are some interesting changes to how aircraft carriers work in this, which I really, really like. Basically, you stop melee attacking cities with them. They begin getting experience whenever aircraft on them start to attack. They have better promotion trees. They should be really cool. And most importantly, I have Civilizations Expanded on again. I really enjoyed having this mod on when playing Egypt because it makes every single Civ in the game a little bit more powerful. I say a little bit, a lot more powerful, including all of the AI, which of course is on Deity. So this could backfire on me very easily. But let's have a quick look and see what Expanded England does. They're just a little bit better in every way. Cities on Europe, my home continent, will receive 50% science from campus buildings and each campus building gives plus one immunity. So as long as I get campuses up on Britain in Europe, I should be a little bit happier. Once I leave Europe and go to any other continent, I will receive 50 
50% production towards industrial zone buildings and a house for each building in them. Industrial zones also trigger culture bombs, which is quite fun. I get plus one trade route capacity for each type of strategic resource improved in my own territory. Now that is instead of the trade route that you would normally get for settling on a different continent. So we've got to make sure that we get a horse, an iron, a knighter, you know, all of them so that we get all those bonus trade routes. We still get red coats. That has not changed, but Workshop of the World again has changed a little bit. 50% production bonus towards builders and military engineers. So I get less towards military engineers, but I also get it towards builders now. So that's cool. Military engineers still get the plus two charges. I still get 25% production towards industrial zones as well as buildings now. That's up a little bit and I get them towards the actual zones themselves, which is cool. Powered buildings still give me plus four yield. That's good. I also get plus one science, plus one production and plus one gold per strategic resource in the desk destination city for every trade route that I have. This is going to be a big bonus once we start getting big cities with lots of strategic resources with them. If I can find a colony with a bunch of horses or iron or nitre or whatever it is in one location, I can make some amazing trade uh, deals to that city. So that should be really fun. I don't believe red coats have really changed because they were awesome already. I think they're pretty much exactly the same. And I don't believe that sea dogs either have really been changed changed at all. No, they're exactly the same as well. So nothing has changed there. Royal Navy Dockyards, where they give an extra Admiral point, which is awesome. It fully heals naval units if it's, so that's kind of the Carthage ability. So that's really cool. You still get the plus one movement, but they also now give a major production adjacency to industrial zones when they're next to them. I've got to remember that. That's a really cool thing. So putting my industrial zones on the coast next to those Royal Navy Dockyards can lead to some pretty awesome adjacencies. There is also an achievement called the Queen and Country where you get a city on every continent on the map. I will be trying to get that steam achievement because I still haven't got that one. Ridiculously. Is that enough setup for you? We all good to get going? Let's go. Remember, come to Discord for the map, all of the mods that I use. Let's have a look at this start. Now, as we can tell, the TSL start that Firaxis gave us on this map is a little bit ridiculous. I basically loaded the map with 20 random players. I kept thinking like, do I put America in? Do I not? Do I put India in? Do I not? Do I put Australia in? And I was just like, I can't figure out whether or not to make the game easy or hard. So I thought I'd let it just randomly generate. And it looks like we've got the Dutch, the French, and Gaul all in one little space. That's actually hilarious to see. I love it. As is usual, loyalty is going to be an absolute mare in this map, but we're going to give it a good go anyway. And because I'm the player, I'm going to just settle in place, start this game off and, you know, London exists. The AI is just going to have to live with it. I am so limited on space. It is ridiculous. Oh, hang on. I had a request for a name of the city. Miss Vicky's Biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like that one. Loyalty is going to be a huge problem. The amount of cities on Europe that we found means that, yeah, we want my capital to be pretty much as high as possible. So I'm going to have to lock in the two food tile over there to make sure that gets put in quickly. Loyalty wise, having a monument is a good start, but getting the builder in is actually better for me because I want to improve that wheat quickly so that I can get the extra food to keep growing. And I don't know whether or not actually beelining for wheel is a good idea to get the extra food production and then the extra food on this tile as well. The wheat is still technically underneath my capital, so it would give me plus three food effectively, which would be a good thing. And especially if I can steal some of these tiles below, I think actually beelining wheel feels like a really weird start, but yeah, I'm gonna just do it. Mining, mine the resource, get the boost, go for, yeah, you know what, sod it. So Gaul won the competition, actually. They won the competition, interesting. It's 50 gold to buy a tile. I don't think I'm gonna be able to seize that before France actually steals it from me. But remember, I can culture bomb using industrial zones. So we wanna keep that in mind for later. I should have enough space to unify the UK and put three cities down. I believe one in Scotland, one on Ireland. Sorry, Wales, just like IRL, you're too small to matter. <laughs> Oh, I probably shouldn't say that. I do quite like Wales. How's the loyalty doing at the moment? 4.3. Hey, I've seen worse. That's okay. We, we can live with that. 
France are just going backwards and forwards at the moment, which is an interesting choice. As long as they don't settle, weirdly, we should be able to win this one. Oh, no, here's the loyalty pressure. Minus two we're on now. If I can find a secret society quickly, man, that would help quickly to get me out of things. There is a tile. There is a tribal village on Ireland. But there's no way of getting to it very easily. I've also just spotted a reef. I want to be getting campuses. Home continent, remember, campuses is a good thing. Just realized every single person denounced me. Why would you do that? I'm, I, they, it's like they're predicting what's going to happen in this game. Don't judge me before I conquer the world. It's not fair. Okay, Gaul is coming out of this much worse than we are. So that's, that's okay. We'll, we'll live with that. That's not too bad. And France still hasn't settled at the moment, but they're probably going to do it. I'm, I'm unfortunately not going to have enough time to get the gold in to stop them from stealing that wheat tile. Brussels got it. You're kidding me. Oh my lord, that is weird. Now, I think I probably actually want to seize this tile if I can. An industrial zone there would be the most amazing culture bomb that would steal so much stuff. So I need 15 more gold to take that tile. And then if I put a Royal Navy dockyard, that will give the plus two over. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but it just might work. And then in theory, I could do this. I could go industrial zone and then I could go aqueduct like that. Uh, oh no, I can't. I can't do that uh, because there's no, that isn't technically on a river tile. All right, we'll have a think about it, but there are options here. This is cool. We've already found Macedon, who hasn't settled still. Looks like we've got a very crowded Europe start this game. It's interesting. The only thing I did tweak a little bit is I stopped Scotland from spawning into the game just because I thought I've played a lot of games as England where we have to go and rush Scotland, and I know I can do it. I just fancy having a little bit more space on the British Isles. But there we go. There's the gold. To buy that tile, it means I have a small foothold into France and I can industrial zone carpet bomb all of the tiles around it later on. It's probably a bit of a waste of gold at the beginning of the game, but never mind. Look at that. Miss Vicky's biscuits. We are already up and running a little bit. Builders already up and running. Let's get this wheat tile sorted. That boost segregation gives me a little bit more food and means that we can continue progressing out nicely. I think going for a settler is probably the best thing to do. There are a couple of rivers in Scotland that mean we've got choice as to where we put our districts down. I'm thinking Venetian Arsenal is going to be very handy in this game. Very handy indeed. So we'll have to think about using Venetian Arsenal. I can't put it around my capital, but that's okay. We don't mind that. I want as much space as possible. So I'm actually going to stick the city up to the top of Scotland. I'll end up doing a thing where I think if I go for an aqueduct, if we, is that not going to let me do that? Why is it not going to let me do that? Is it technically across a river like that? That's a funny location. Okay, fine. If you're not going to let me do that, let me do that. Okay, so I could do this one, two, go for an industrial zone like there. No, hang on, flip it around like that and then go for the Royal Navy Dockyard on that tile, which boosts that to plus five. And then we can go for Venetian Arsenal like on this tile or somewhere similar. It's a bit convoluted, but I think that's not a bad idea. And then we'll work out what's going on with Ireland in a bit. As an Englishman, I can never truly understand what's going on in Ireland. I can only guess. The best thing that we have to, or closest thing to a Bible about what goes on in Ireland we have is of course the gospel that is Ed Sheeran's Galway Goyle. It's um pretty much the only thing that can give us any insight. Goal is out already, but we can always liberate them back in. That could be a good thing to do, although it's actually going to give me the city. Now, this is the tricky thing. Do I take a city on Europe and get myself an extra piece of land? Or do I keep the diplomatic favor because if I take that city I'm going to get a minus five which will stop me from taking any favor from anyone for most of the game. That's a bit of a choice that. I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is to that one. We'll see if actually I still get it because the unmet civilization I believe that's probably going to be Germany or Rome putting a lot of pressure there and we may not actually get the city after this. It could also be taken over by Macedon. Macedon haven't settled the city. Look there we go Rome. Ah that's it was always going to happen. Someone was always going to try and steal that from me. Let's just get this mine down. Bam! Wheel has been boosted. 14 turns to get a water mill down just to really increase my capital's food and production. Yeah, I think Rome may end up taking this. Again, we've got to stop Rome from crossing into the British Isles. They, they're they going to want to do that, and I don't like it. Look how close it is, though. Now, Rome is actually doing a lot more. I was thinking about whether or not if I focus on getting a little bit more food in, we might be able to just push the city through a little bit more. There's craftsmanship, but... If I lock that tile in, what does that look like? I'd get the population, get up to three quickly. I think I might end up doing that. Yeah, population is key in crowded European starts like this. You really, really want to keep that going. Code of Laws, God King. 
Always got to be God King. I'd love to go harvest calendar at the beginning of the game, just to give myself a little bit of extra food in my capital, but I think I'm going to go for that. Harvest calendar, by the way, is added by Civilizations Expanded, the mod that changes every sieve to be a little bit better. It just means that there's an extra card for some of the sieves that start with extra economic cards. It's a very useful thing for them. Do I want to rush Maritime Industries or do I want to rush Builders and Nagogi? Maritime Industries? I think I might end up doing Maritime Industries. That's not a bad one. Although finding another continent is going to be a bit tricky. Let's go Craftsmanship first. There's a lot of decisions here. I don't know what I'm doing. I've only played 3,500 hours of this game. I'm not qualified at all. So we're up to population three and we're now working this beautiful three production tile to crank that settler out. It's not a very interesting start in the sense that we're just kind of waiting for a bit. The Dutch are almost out of the game already as well. Portugal is going to have an amazing game and I'm actually worried about them going and making colonies all into the Caribbean and into America. We may have to fight Portugal just a bit to make sure that we do well. Oh, Woolen. Woolen has decided to spawn effectively in Europe. That's a really strange one. At this point, I've just learned to say, sure, sure, Civ, sure, I'll, uh, whatever. There is the aforementioned Rome. Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you indeed. Look, Rome have taken the European land. I mean, the Roman Empire is sort of founding by accident here, which is sort of a little bit scary, but we'll take it. That's not too bad. Minus four. Oh, that population loss was a little bit of a problem. Let's go found that city quickly to give myself a bit more pressure. I also want a monument up nice and fast in case I get any heroes. I don't think I've discovered who heroes are at the moment, which is a bit of a problem. It's what happens when you never leave the British Isles. Oh, we are losing loyalty quickly, very quickly. I'm actually seeing whether or not it would be worth settling on this tile in order to get the water, but I think actually no, the housing will be fine. We can, I, could, I would rather granary and improve uh, fish and, and pastures and stuff like that, so I'd rather just move a little bit further away and give my capital a bit more space. I think that's the best thing to do. So what are we on now? Minus five. Oh, that's scary. But if I found the city, it says Liverpool. This is more, I'm just going to call it Scotland. It's as close as we're going to get. But does that improve my loyalty at all? Mm, maybe a little, but it's it's a close run thing. We've got to get that watermelon quick, haven't we? How much is it to buy? 320. Maybe that's the best thing to do if I get some luxuries in. That's the closest thing to a luxury we're going to get. These whales. Whales. Actually, look, there we go. It's a little nod that the map's got. We don't have whales on the map, but there are whales just off the Welsh coast. So there we go. It's a thing. It's a feature. Now we've got wheel, I'm just going to pick sailing up so that we can get ourselves some fish. I might be able to chop some fish actually in order to give myself a bit of a pop boost. Let's see how this plays out. Oh no, I did get a little, little bit more pop from having Scotland above me. So that's not bad. Oh, there we go. And we stabilised. Now we're on three pop and we've got Scotland above. We have stabilised. It's going to get worse as Rome settles and gets more population, but it's a little bit of stability. And honestly, a little bit of stability is all we can really ask for at times. We do have minus 25% from wavering a loyalty though. That's a bit of a problem. <sighs> Unfortunately, we haven't found a governor yet, and that's a bit of a problem. No secret societies, no governors, nothing like that. That would have massively helped. Actually, the monument will help on loyalty though. That'll just push it just a little bit up. I'm force working some food in Scotland as well to make sure this city grows for me. That would be a really good thing if you could do that. God King is still going. Alas, I'm losing a bit of faith per turn, which is a bit of a problem. I'm actually going to just switch to... Oh, do I do that? I really want a Pantheon. I really want a Pantheon. How important is a Pantheon? It's really important. It sets me up for the game. Let's do that. Oh, I hate doing that. Fine. Let's do that. Let's go foreign trade. We'll get this rocking as soon as we can. Portugal, do you have a galley just off my coast, which is a little bit annoying. I kind of need to think about making friends with them where possible. Oh, Rome took Amsterdam as well. That's unfortunate. Okay, we're gonna have to keep an eye on Rome, I think. Rome are going to be what we like to call a bit of a loyalty problem. But Amsterdam normally comes with no production and a bunch of food as well, so we'll see. See how that plays into us. Oh, would you stop denouncing me? You haven't got a single city. Oh, well, I mean, France are playing the ultimate game of you can never be knocked out if you never started the game. It's quite interesting to watch. I have a builder. Amazing. I need it to go and help with my capital. Scotland? Ah, oh, it seems like Scotland's existence is to funnel production and wealth into London. That's a weird how crazy concepts can uh, be totally made up in Civ. <laughs> oh dear. Pyramids are gone already. It's unfortunate that this game doesn't provide stone in England to make Stonehenge. Not that I had any chance of making it, but 
I, I, I always find that funny. Uh, let's get the galley going. I think we're going to build galley and then we're going to go in Scotland build a galley like that. I need a bit of the navy to keep any interested parties like Norway and Portugal off my borders. They're very likely to come and have a little bit of a nosy. I'm going to get animal husbandry into writing as well. Portugal are just sort of sat off my coast with a boat right now which is just a little bit concerning. I would rather you didn't go for me. You are trading. Portugal are trading with me. That's the thing. They may decide to actually just chill. Maybe. I, I don't know yet. We'll see. Maybe I can actually just continue growing my capital out a little bit. I'm just thinking if I, yeah, work that food tile and go and put a boat on it, that's five turns for growth. That'll put me onto four population. That's cool. I need Scotland to get itself just one more housing. Uh, I can do that with this sheep. That'll give me half a housing. And then this, yeah, the fish over there. Cool. So we can do that. That's not a problem. Again, it's all about population. I need to just get myself populated up and running as quickly as possible. I'm going to hard work foreign trade as well. Oh, we're going to go to a dark age. Ugh, bleh, that's really bad. We may end up having an accidental Scotland only challenge in this game. Depends if we can hang on to the capital or not. Oh, that's some wavering loyalty and a half. Bleh, 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 bleh. That's not good. That's not good. Are you still growing? I don't think there's any growth penalties. Disloyal. Oh no, there is. Ah, oh, the city's barely growing now because of a disloyalty issue. Scotland is my only hope. And Scotland is kind of just doing its own thing at the moment. Maybe I'll just have to chop the fish out. It seems like a bit of an annoying thing to do, but I might just have to chop the fish. That'll give me a pop boost. That'll put me to four. We could do that. I could... Do I get the housing on Scotland? Or do I just chop out the... Or the sheep. This is again another question. That would give me 29. That would, I believe, yeah, push me up a population. Oh, uh, no, I'm going to have to just take the housing and then go for the fish over there. But I think I'm going to have to get rid of these fish. That seems like such a weird thing to do, but I'm going to have to do it. Can't remove fish. Requires celestial navigation. Of course it does. Of course it does. I've forgotten that one. Okay, right. Well, we'll have to think about that, won't we? Well, this Dark Age is going to finish me off. What a start. What a start this is proving to be. I can buy a luxury. Would that help at all? Give me plus one immunity. If I got plus one, I'd go to plus two. Loyalty-wise, if I can got the whales, that would give me plus three loyalty. So that would put me to minus 1.2. That's not a bad shout. Oh, right. I'm going to have to... I wasted a builder charge doing that, but that's fine. I'll go and work that tile again. Then I'm going to bring my builder to get the housing for Scotland, and then I'll go and make these way yeah no i'm gonna have to do it like that this feels really odd but i think this is the best way okay we can get a pantheon is there anything that would help me at all anything that will help me here sun god plus one food and plus one production from farms over bonus resources that might help my capital grow just a touch by putting an extra food on it i mean that might be the only play i have at the moment god of the sea is production on fishing boats it scales well but it's not what i need right now right now we need to stay in the game so i think sun god this is one of the improved pantheons that comes with the religion extended mod you have to do that four religions are up already we've got eastern orthodoxy legalism um Shaivanism and Catholicism are all up and running. Very interesting. That's the boost for Celestial Navigation, actually. That's pretty cool. I'm going to beeline early empire to get the governor as well. That will help. Oh, we're going to grow one population next turn. That's useful. And Scotland, please, can you grow? Please, can you just sort yourself out? Let's give ourselves now the harvest calendar. Give me a little bit of extra food. We've got discipline. Let's put maritime industries in. That's good. We'll get these galleys sorted quickly. And then next turn, this should be... I'm hoping four pop. That improves the loyalty a bit. We're at minus 1.5. Okay. Minus 1.5 is good. Scotland is nice and loyal. It's growing still. And we can go for... Oh, I can't buy the luxury from Rome anymore. Mm, they sold it to someone. That's frustrating. Guess what I could still do is get the whales. That's 90 gold. And then, I mean, what can I do to sell it? Um, not... 90 gold unfortunately but but still makes scotland a little happier makes miss vicky's biscuits a little bit happier i'm gonna get a couple of galleys i mean do we think portugal are just hanging here to be chill or do we think they're going to attack us what do you reckon eh <laughs> answers on a postcard also Roma on 73 science now it's only turn 49 Roma having an absolute blinder of a start they're really loving it no 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 my capital my capital don't do that 
don't do that, I really need you to continue building, but you've now gone from unrest, which means that they've stopped building anything. Okay, how many turns am I away from getting my governor? A lot. I need Scotland now. You're gonna have to build me the monument out. Let's do this. Yeah, Dark Age, we couldn't avoid it. So I'm gonna lose London. I'm gonna have to go and take that back in a second. What a start. What a start. Never say that I don't give you early game joy in these things. Right, what are we going to do? What's the best thing that we can end up doing? I think three inquiries is probably the easiest way of us getting ourselves into a heroic age. That's when we're gonna bounce back. How about the loyalty? <sighs> Minus 10. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, and Scotland's not happy as well. Right, is there any way we can, oh, before we lose this city, is there anything we can do to chop it out quickly? I think there is. No, we're going to have to just fall back on Scotland and we're going to have to come and take this city back somehow. Oh, it's just seven production needed on that galley. That's the infuriating thing. How's Rome doing? Rome's in a golden age. That's why we're really suffering here. Well, I think Portugal will end up taking the city. Portugal don't necessarily dislike me. That's the thing. So I'm hoping that won't be the worst thing in the world. But let's just let it flip. Scotland is going to go down to three pop and I'm going to lose it and it'll now be my effective capital. But that's okay. It means the palace has moved now it means I'm actually getting culture per turn so I can get this governor in so it's not the worst thing this city will flip to Rome there's no way it won't unless we somehow get very lucky I'm just gonna hang my galley nearby and I'm gonna pick up this tribal hut in Ireland which gives me a trader I can't trade with anybody at the moment why not why can't I do that available routes not giving me any Allows builders to embark, allows traders to embark, celestial navigation, of course. Okay, so that trader is useless for me. Never mind. Let's see what Portugal does. It looks like Portugal are going to go and try and settle Ireland, which is a bit of a problem. So Portugal are going to end up taking London and they're going to settle Ireland. Oh, that's going to put a lot of pressure on me. That's going to put a huge amount of pressure on me. What I could do is just hang my warrior around, hang my galley around and see if we can just nab this. I'm also going to be really annoying. This builder is going to try and stop Portugal from settling on Ireland. We're gonna do that as much as we can. How bad is Scotland's loyalty? 5.1, I think it should be okay. If we can get a governor in this city as well, that's all a good sign of things to come. Oh no, Portugal know exactly what I'm doing. They know exactly what I'm doing and they are putting their settler so that they can embark onto Ivatal. You know what, I'm gonna make them settle closer to everyone else to give them more of a loyalty issue, but that's, that's sneaky. They know exactly what they're doing. Right, I'm just gonna move my warrior in to that tile so that I can make a melee attack if I want. And actually, oh, the galley can't move through the Portuguese unit. That's a bit frustrating. Oh, and Portugal are actually leaving their galleys outside Scotland as well. I don't think they're content. I think they're absolutely looking at attacking us if they can. Oh, I could now get wine. This would be an option for me to at least try and get a bit more happiness, but I mean, I've lost the wheels, so I don't think it's a good option for me. But I mean, we, we saw what happened last time. If I didn't buy it, Rome would sell it to someone else. I'm just gonna claim it while I can. So we have writing. That would have been useful once upon a time. At the moment, it is probably not, but we'll try and make it work. I need to get a kill the slinger. I need to get as many of these Eurekas as I can. That's kind of the most important thing. In own two galleys i'm just about to get that one that's at least one point how many points for a golden age we need to get to 33 so we need 23 points oh dear that's a lot that's a lot of points we might be able to go normal easily enough but a golden might prove tricky built a galley ship building as i mentioned is now done perfect do i just abandon all sort of hope of, of normal semblance of activities and do i just go for building a campus in this city what's the best thing to do heroic tales a hero might be a good idea actually right now i do need a hero that is quite literally what i need um oh yeah i'm gonna lose ireland oh they're gonna do it what a what a shame what a shame and it's a problem that it's portugal as well because they have such a huge navy a lot of the time okay portugal have decided to start attacking again that's good that's really good okay we'll we'll keep an eye on this we but we can there's still a small chance oh anon's has already been claimed by trajan of course he has never mind there's early empire that gives me a governor a governor what governor is going to be helpful here if in, in some crazy situation i take this city back what would be the best thing to do victor the garrison commander. I think that's the best thing I can do. Yeah, we're gonna have to do it. So I'll put Victor into Scotland for now. There's Guarda. I'm hoping Portugal will not hold on to that city and we'll be able to claim it a little bit later. Go on, keep attacking. Leave the city open. Oh, they didn't leave it open. 
but they left it as close to because now I can go one, two like this. There is also a barb clan up there. I don't have enough gold to hire anything that the barbs are likely to leave, but I've now got a couple of attacks. If I can just wait a second, let Portugal do a little bit more damage, just a touch, we might be able to pull this off. This may be one of the biggest heists that has ever been pulled. We only have two turns on this one. Only two turns. Come on, we need one person to make an attack. Portugal didn't fall for the bait. Well, if they're not gonna attack, did it make sense to then attack myself that turn? I think it might have done. I'm going to go back one turn and I'm going to see if we can take it. So we've gone back to the turn in question. Portugal doesn't look like they want to attack. But if I make an attack, lower the city's defense, this warrior can't do it. But now, if I did attack next turn, I would be able to get through. I'm also going to ask for an open border trade with Rome because they kick me out of the borders when my boat comes through. And I'm hoping I can avoid that happening. Open borders? Portugal? I don't want to give Portugal open borders right now. That's a terrible idea. And so Portugal will move around like they did already. The city's still on low health. Okay. Rome bought that tower. They didn't kick me out though. And now... I can go one and take the city. Rebellion in three turns though. Oh, that's tough. I can only keep it, but there's no way that I'm gonna end up keeping that city, I don't think. What's the amenities like? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do here? Just make Scotland as big as possible. Make it as strong a city as I physically can here. I can get a little bit more from a trade route now. I'm gonna have to take it, it's my capital. I have to try and keep it. But let's just have a quick look at this. The plus one immunity is because the palace has moved to Scotland now. So now Scotland is happy, but I really needed the palace in my new city. I can sell my whales for a lot. Now, what would that let me do? Not a huge amount, not a huge amount. But I could put Victor across. I could build a government plaza. If I chopped out a government plaza, that would give me plus eight loyalty per turn. So I might have to do that and time it well. Yeah, I'm going to lose these whales soon anyway. So I'm going to sell them to Rome. Rome is already in a golden age. I don't need to worry about what they're doing uh, in terms of loyalty. They'll be fine either way. The granary is bought. Scotland is now still growing. The higher the population I can get in this city, the better. Still pumping out galleys. That is not a problem for me, ideally. I think leaving units in and around my capital is a good thing to do. Victor, get across. That gives me five turns before the city flips. I believe, yeah, the, I think chopping a government plaza I think is probably going to be the, the play here. And there's the Barb clan. Anything I can do? I could buy a man at arms. No, that's, uh, I think it's a bit ambition, uh, big, a bit ambitious, but I might actually get a secret society from them. So there's a, there's a possibility that might be quite useful. So this city is going to flip again. What I'm going to do is effectively try and just kind of like garrison the city. So I don't want to give anybody the opportunity to take it. I've got my three galleys blocking the naval passages. Equally, I don't want to grab this city super quickly because I'm just going to end up losing it again. And every time I take it, well, basically we just cause loyalty problems for ourselves because I can't I have to sort of shed population from it. So until we can maintain the city and keep it, I don't need to rush this particularly. What I want to do, is get the government plaza in and I'm six turns away from doing that and I'm within boost range. I'm building a campus in Scotland so we're going to flick this around now. Uh, ideally, yeah, we've got Celestial Navigation on the way. I want that quickly and I'm going to go for, let's go for, I mean, oh, ideally I want to just be rushing this but military tradition I think is going to have to do for now. What we're going to do is hold out for as long as we can. Dark Age is not going to stop for another 22 turns or so. That's a problem. There are some things we can do to make error score, but honestly, not a huge amount. So I need to just bide my time. Wait, softly wait. Just be gentle and slow and just take my time here and, and strike later. The fact that Rome is hugely powerful just means that the Roman Empire are doing well this game. That's kind of expected. Merely passing by, look, Rome, this is, this is not, not the time. No, go away. Go away. I'm not moving my troops away from any of you. Like you are be you you are in my territory. This is the British Isles, okay? I'm allowed to be here. This is this is my space. I'm just gonna wait. If I can save it for nine turns, I will. Maybe with three turns remaining, I'm gonna go and start attacking and see if we can seize this city. But I don't need to rush it. Vilnius just flipped as well, by the way. So that's something to keep an eye on. Can I just say as well, I'm being a really good boy because I, all this time, from about turn 30, Portugal have been offering me a 
trade deal to go to war uh, with France, who have one warrior left, and they've been offering me about 500 gold per turn, or like at the moment it's like 350 gold per turn, but I've seen it higher, and I'm not taking it. I'm being very good, so I don't want anyone telling me that, you know, I, I don't take this seriously, because I do. Looks like Portugal are going to go and settle Iceland, which is a bit annoying, but never mind. My warrior somehow is still alive. That's a good thing. Is there the wonder on Iceland? I don't think there is. Oh, I was hoping, again, I'm just trying to find Hermetic Order or something. Something that's going to give me a break, any break right now. Oh no, I lost the warrior. I lost the warrior. Uh, that's annoying. I didn't see that slinger appear. Never mind. I have got a library or a campus complete now though. That's good. That means we've got state workforce to finish now and I can unlock the government plaza and that gives me another option. Uh, it's going to take me two turns to hit this city down. So we're going to just keep an eye on that one. So I have a second governor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a, a different governor entirely. Someone that I think is going to be useful rather than getting for garrison commander at the moment. I'm going to leave garrison commander as the third one. So Victor doesn't have to leave my capital. What should I do? I think it's got to be Pingala. Absolutely has to be Pingala. Unless Magnus could chop out quickly. But I don't think the city will survive five turns to do the chop. It could though. That'd be the play. So yeah, Magnus it is. Um, oh, this is going to be a tough one. This is going to be a tough one. What I'm going to do as well is just change from Maritime Industry to Limitani, which gives me plus two loyalty per turn for having a unit in the city. That's good. I've still got Harvest Calendar. That's working well, but I could get myself Urban Planning maybe in order to give myself a little bit of extra production. Scotland has actually hit its housing cap. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that instead. Urban Planning, that'll help. Got this library happening. I want to get the Royal Navy done yard sorted there's I mean, still hope in this game I can I can crack out it's just really tough really 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 tough uh, I'm gonna go for political philosophy to get the government I need era score I need a lot of era score <laughs> at the moment we could be going from dark to dark which which I don't think I remember last time that happened oh my pledge broken to Rome oh get lost it really hasn't been I don't want to see that that's that is that is rubbish and you know it all right though we're down to three turns now so this is where the galleys get serious we're gonna go one two three like that the city sieged i don't think portugal are going to steal the city if they do we may have to briefly um reset slightly because i don't want that to happen nope they are going to just move away and break the siege annoyingly that's a bit frustrating never mind we'll go for actually hang on i can Oh, can I pillage this? I can't pillage. Why can't I pillage? Oh, there's nothing on that tile. That's why I can't pillage. Okay, it was only going to give me food anyway, so that's probably not worth it. One attack, two attacks. This city's now mine. I will keep it. Perfect. It's uh, minus 18 because I've got that plus two. I can actually buy some amber, which would take me to... Yeah, that would actually take me to plus two. Um, although I need the wheels back, ideally, which are still being sold to Rome, but... They've been pillaged. That's annoying. Oh, well, what I'm going to do is we're going to swap tiles around a little bit here. I'm going to put that in. I'm going to pop Magnus into Miss Vicky's biscuits. I need this to survive 10 turns, ideally. That's that's the ideal. That's what I want to see happen so that I can get this government plaza sorted. That'll give me plus eight loyalty. And that will hopefully mean that I keep my capital. Let's do that. I'm just going to move this so that when I chop, I'm going to yeah 54 production i want to get as close to being able to chop that in one go as i can and yeah i'm going to take the amber i think i'm just going to keep taking them i can make friends with portugal that would stop me from being attacked uh no they don't want it oh that's frustrating i could just declare war on france but this will give me grievances there's only the one warrior you know which is it's not a problem it's just like ugh, I, I just need them to be doing something that isn't attack me 36 production to fix that tile. Okay, so I don't really even need Magnus as long as I can get a bit of production out. Just a bit. 50% from Disloyal already. Already! We can start meeting people though. Russia. If I go and just meet people, I'm hoping we'll be able to find luxuries. The more luxuries I can get, the better. Also, the more era score. Every time I find someone, it's a little bit more of an opportunity to get some era score out. Oh no, Portugal has declared war on me. Portugal have declared war on me. Okay, I feel like you did want that to happen. Oh, I could tell. I, I knew I should have gone for the joint war. I knew I should have done that. Right. Is there any way I can save Scotland? Is there any way right now? Well, first of all, we have to say, how can we get people involved? Are you going to join in Rome with this deal? Yes, Rome want in. That's a useful thing. And Russia, do you want in as well? No, 
they don't. But Rome are now involved in this war, which means that actually Rome's navy could come and save me a little bit here, which is cool. I've got I've got a couple of galleys. I can start to plunder a few routes. There's 180 gold of that, which is awesome. I'm just gonna have to get another galley in Scotland. Actually, yeah, 40 garrison strength. There we go, look, Victor is doing well. Victor has increased my combat strength by plus five. Nice. So this is actually a tough city. I don't think Portugal are gonna be able to bash their way through. They may end up taking London which may be a little bit more of a problem. Brussels is still attacking that city. It's a little bit of a problem. Um, okay, let me just, if I make that attack and then go to there and start to heal rebellion in two turns, it's still a bit too much, but I can get the truffles. Oh, oh, I can get truffles. Okay, right, that's plus three immunities. That means we're only down to minus seven now. <gasps> okay. I just need access to that wood again, and that's the problem, because unfortunately Portugal have moved a warrior on that tile, but in theory, that is now that is now doable. I just need them to move their units away, so we'll see if we can do that. Vilnius I am at war with, unfortunately. That's a little bit of annoyance. I'm finishing this library just out of spite, if nothing else. I'm going to have my trader pillaged, which is annoying, but I just want it, I want it done. I want it finished. Oh, what just killed? My galley was destroyed by a Portuguese quadrant. Oh, another galley as well. Ugh, that's not good. Oh, Arthur. King Arthur. No, I don't need you coming into England. That's not right at all. Well, my galley is being attacked by this massive Portuguese navy on all sides, but Scotland's holding firm. Scotland is holding firm at the moment. Celestial navigation. Oh, that would have been so much help, more helpful if I wasn't at war. Oh, I've got a slinger on the way. This galley is being killed. I'm going to lose this one as well. I think I can just retreat into Roman lands. There we go. Let's just hold myself there. Portugal might follow me in, but I'm, you know, hopefully the galley will, will knock them out first. And they keep attacking Scotland with their galleys and units, but yeah, and because I'm on a hill, because I've got Magnus involved, it's actually proving really tricky for them to attack this city. Unfortunately, they, Portugal ruined it. I would have kept my capital. That's the frustrating thing in all of this. I actually would have kept it. Never mind. Um, I can't heal outside of friendly territory. Of course I can't, because Rome doesn't count as friendly territory. This slinger is out now as well, so I can actually start to fight back just a touch. Getting a wall up is probably a good idea, but if I can get that archery boost, I'll do that as well. I have a builder in Rome, but I'm actually going to just use it to go and explore now. Um, Hercules! Oh my goodness. And Hermetic Order. Right. Okay, a few things are happening now. A few things are happening. I can't go for Hermetic Order at the moment, but I can get Garrison Commander. Units defending within the city territory get plus five strength, and I get plus four loyalty per turn towards the civilization. I'm going to just use that now. Um, we can't put into Siege would be a really good one, but we're just holding out on the hill for now. I'm going to switch to getting myself more navy. I need to just spam a navy now. Absolutely spam a navy. But before that, I'm going to pick up Hercules, and then, then we'll go navy spam. But oh my goodness, getting Hercules, that... That is game changing. That's awesome. There he is. Okay, uh, 56 strength uh, in the city. That's a good sign. That means Hercules has got 48 strength. That's pretty tough. Pretty tough. There's not much I can do with him right now, but I can move him out of there. Can we get the slinger kill? I have got garrison commander. There is a unit in the sea there. So yes, we should be able to, bam, archery boosted. Let's get that archery done. Let's get the archer in quickly. Let's get the galley moving out and do we get that attacking no there's no point at the moment i need i need reinforcements before i do that we'll leave hercules there as well Ugh, my builder was captured by king arthur he barely got in i did luckily guarantee that i'm in a normal age next turn ideally i'd like heroic but the chances of me getting heroic right now are so slim it's ridiculous. Yeah, my entire navy has now been destroyed apart from the stuff that I'm now building and the stuff that's in Scotland, so that's that's not very useful. Portugal are still attacking, but they're not breaking through. They're not breaking through. And now I get to start countering. Slinger gets the kill on the warrior. Hercules, in you come. Bam. Let's forge a path to London. If I can pick London up, you bet I'm going to. I'm going to do it. We're going to take this city back. I'm actually going to punch my galley out as well just to get rid of that admiral, but because I'm also about to get some reinforcements, so I need to actually move out of the city. They may get a better attack on Scotland there, which isn't great, but now I've got another galley and it can do the biz. Let's just quickly get this archer sorted. Bam. We'll give the upgrade to them next turn as well. We've got the galley to come out gonna heal i'm still building galleys it's all still going good punching through hercules keep going 
get to the capital. Good, they're still attacking me. They're still attacking me. It's not going to help you. Political philosophy as well. I would love to go Classical Republic, but I'm going to have to go Oligarchy just to give myself the combat bonus for now. We have Maritime Industries. I'm going to give myself the extra loyalty. I'm going to give myself uh, Twilight Valor. Yeah, this is going to be the only way. <laughs> only way we're going to do this for now, but we've got the kill there. Let's start to heal my gal. Oh, actually, no, this is the full strength galley. Let's move you out. Go to there. And I mean, ideally, I want to be able to attack London soon. This might be an opportunity, actually, for me to steal a city of my own. If I can go and take Guada. Oh, they've just increased the range strength of that city. That's a little bit of a problem, but... A normal age. A normal age is better than dark. That's fine. I don't mind that. Free inquiry again. We don't mind that either. Immediately lose Twilight Fowler. That's okay. I don't mind that. I think we can move around that one. Should we get conscription to give us a little bit more gold? Let's do that quickly. And diplomatic favor. Oh, Russia's going to start gobbling that up. We will keep an eye on that one as well. Come on, Port I'm looking for peace with Portugal. If we can get peace with Portugal, that'll be a good help as well. I'd love it if melee units got a bit stronger because I have a lot of those and I would love it if we could trade with scientific city-states because quite frankly I don't care. Whatever happens is fine. Melee goes up. Good. That means that Hercules is stronger now. Remember the units then? Oh, they killed Ar uh, Arthur killed itself on Hercules. That's interesting. Um, a special session went through. I mean, I wish we could just start a Portugal is rubbish emergency. <laughs> I'd like that a lot. Uh, I'm assuming generals are all, yeah, we're up to medieval era already. Okay, there's no, no point in me going for those. I'll attack this swordsman. I do not want that landing. Thank you. I'll get that galley kill. Beautiful. We'll move you into there. I'll get you to heal. We're just cycling our units around and I think I can go and take my old capital back. How bad's the loyalty? Only minus 11. Only minus 11 this time. That's nowhere near as bad as it has been. Okay. Well then, Magnus, in you come. Kachoop, lovely. We're on to minus three. Goodness me. That, I mean, that's that's so much better than it has been. And then we'll go for a government plaza and I can rush that build in order to get the loyalty to keep the city. Masonry, you need to happen quick. I'm going to go galley, fix the campus. Oh, it's, I think we might be able to just about pull this off in terms of a defense. The best thing we can do now is if Portugal wants to make peace, but they're not going to. What did Portugal go into, by the way? Golden Age. Uh, they're not going to lose their grip on Ireland, unfortunately. That's, that's unfortunate. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Gloria. Petra, Salty Tech, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Doughboy91, Sean Critties, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Portland, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Emir EC, Henry, Rom88, Radiatore, and Private Selection Genoa Salami for all of your support as well as everybody that leaves comments and interacts with the channel generally. Thank you so much. See you all next time.